All right. Hi, I'm Ty Smith. We're back here at the AANP, and I have the most special of all guests. I've got wow. Al Zapp, Good CEO you, and president uh, of Thorn Research. Um, and uh, this is an unusual privilege to get to get you on camera, so we're going to get some good stuff here. I usually do bad things on camera, so be prepared. <laughs> okay, good. All right, we'll be prepared for that. But let's start, let's start off because I've been talking with the leaders of our industry, the doctors, the CEOs, the EVPs, about the state of our industry and what's important, what we should be concentrating on, what's important, what are the trends in our industry now. From your standpoint, what do you see as the most important issues in the doctor market? Um, well, if you talk to a doctor, they're talking about health care and they're talking about what is good for their patients. If you look in the media, with our industry, you see nothing but bad things about dietary supplements. Uh, people that are buying products from another country that the raw material happens to be spiked with something that's going to give you big muscles or create a uh, erectile dysfunction product that's supposed to be natural or the miracle weight loss. So what is happening in this industry is that uh, the people who are in specific position where um, they think that the thing that this industry needs for credibility is to do more studies to show that dietary supplements are more efficacious than the standard medical doctor thinks. There are is a lot of merit to that, but they're missing the big point that that's up here in the stratosphere. And if you have no products available, it's nice to show that these things will work, but the companies that are manufacturing them, if they're not doing the right quality control to satisfy the consumer, the doctor, and the regulatory agent, there won't be any products left. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> the problem is that there has been an improvement in quality control over the last few years. Uh, there are still a lot of people in the marketplace who feel it is a free-for-all where they have the ability to sell anything and make any claim and that's not something that's going to be acceptable in the future. Mm -hmm. The second problem is at our company we've, you know, we've built for many, many years on a scientific basis of the materials that go into the products, the manufacturing process and the laboratory analysis of each stage. Uh, and doing things in as much of a pharmaceutical manner as you can. And there are a lot of companies that have not gotten to that point. And the problem that I see is that there's going to be a washout in this industry. And what's going to happen is that the people who don't realize that this is serious business and that they have to actually make their products right and satisfy all the regulatory requirements, even though it's going to take some time and some work and some effort, and there is some room for people to improve you can't just walk in when the day the FDA comes in the door and say, I haven't done anything, what do I need to do? Because I've been attending a number of regulatory seminars put on by the FDA and the United Natural Product Alliance, and what happens is, as the FDA is explaining what is going to be coming up in the upcoming inspections, which are under the Code of Federal, Reg Federal Regulations, CFR 21, and it's called Part 111, and it's a much more stringent pharmaceutical type of environment that dietary supplements are going to live in. And as the FDA is explaining in the seminars what questions they're going to be asking you, what things they're going to look for in your factory, and what they're going to require, as you look around the room of 100 or 200 people, there's a, a blank look on many people's face that they're not expecting this to be happening, and they will still raise their hand after the presentation and say, well, can't I just rely on the manufacturer's certificate of analysis for this herb? Well, no, because there, there are many people in the industry who just don't realize that's not how it's going to be and that's not how it should be done. It shouldn't have been done that way for a long time. So you have to look at, for the doctors to do studies and prove something works, they can't do that if you have nothing to sell. So you have to create products that are going to, to be right. You, you don't want to go to the store and open up a jar of protein powder and have to worry if there's melamine in it. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to worry about buying a supplement that has been contaminated by uh, heavy metals or has gone through a process that's not acceptable. So the emphasis in the industry that people have to realize who are in manufacturing and who want to provide this and make it their living is that they're gonna have to comply in, as the FDA says, uh, 
know your supplier. The second most important thing is know your supplier. And the third most <laughs> important thing is know your supplier. And these are the actual words from the FDA as they sit in the seminar. And that means you actually have to go through and look at where that raw material comes from. So let's just take an example of an herb. If you're the, the Ty Smith company and you have a company that has a product um, with a, a label and it's got your name on it, the Ty Smith company, mm -hmm. you are the one responsible for that being the right ingredient, mm -hmm. not the person who is a contract manufacturer that made it for you. They still have to go through their paces, but the ultimate responsibility is you. Is, is my company. Right. And wow. so what happens is that many people don't make their own products, and that's the first thing that people should look for in a manufactured product, is if the person is actually making it. If it says manufactured by, not distributed by. So the, the second thing is that if you have two herbs in that product, and you buy them from the, the XYZ Herb Company, which is a small herb supplier, and you buy 10 pounds of burdock root, uh -huh. and 10 pounds of echinacea and gustifolia root, uh -huh. and you want to mix them together and put them in a capsule. Uh -huh. In the old days, what people would do is they'd just accept the certificate of analysis that this is burdock root and this is echinacea root. So now, what happens is, if you're having someone make it, they need to find out that that supplier was the person who picked the material and identified it as a botanical, and then they dried it properly in a good condition, ground it up and put it in powder. But for 20 pounds, and maybe they have 100 pounds in inventory, they didn't do that. They bought it from the ABC Broker Company. And these are fictitious number, names, so yeah. don't yeah. sue I've never seen, Don't sue I've, him. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. So let's say right, the ABC in, in, yeah. Broker Company <laughs> bought 5,000 pounds of echinacea from the, you know, the, the Chinese uh, company over here yep. that sold 100,000 pounds. But did they identify it properly? and what were the conditions they did. Because if the little guy you worked with bought it from someone who bought it from someone who bought it from someone, then there's a chain here that you have to get through to know who the supplier was. So you don't just have to know the contract manufacturer, you need to know where the supply came that he ordered it from, and did that person actually cultivate and do it? Well, you have to go one step up and one step up. And then when you get the product in, you are going to need to identify that that's the real product mm -hmm. with the proper method, which would be high pressure thin layer chromatography. Well, I've been at your place and see, you have this incredible lab. And, and, and so is, is that how you assure yourself that that's exactly what it says on the, uh, on the package? The, those are the steps that are going to be necessary. And, and we do a lot of raw material testing, in-process testing, and finished product testing. And there are some things that we don't have the capability in our lab to do, we send them out. So mm -hmm. something like echinacea, if you, we don't pick it, so we have to have someone who has the right retained sample that's been identified properly by a botanist, and they have the, the, the thin layer chromatography pattern for it. So we'll send it to someone like Alchemists, which is the company in uh, Irvine, California, that has that capability, and they have a library of accepted standards by botanical experts in the world. So you can actually have them identify that substance. And we do this, I mean, we just rejected three, three different raw herbs in the last month wow. that didn't come up to that standard. So you can't just take that sheet of paper and say, this is fine. Mm -hmm. you, this is where it's going to go is, now, if you're only selling 20 bottles a month of that product and you make up enough for a year and your investment becomes, you know, that, that people haven't done, a lot of people is, you know, micro testing, heavy metal contamination, identification, stability, and by the time you're done, you may have $3,000 in testing for something you only sell $300 a month of. So that, what, it, that would you say, it's going to wash people It's out. going to wash out yeah. people who are not willing to actually go in and do what is necessary for quality control. And this is just one little example. There are many, many things like this. How, how would a well-meaning manufacturer that, let's say somebody that was getting into the business and really meant to do well, how would they know to pick the right lab? You know, let's say they don't have the kind of ability, the investment that you've put in your own labs and so forth. Mm -hmm. How do they know what to do? Well, you first thing you would do is you'd look at AOAC.